Waternet is a uh, Southern African Development Community Institution for Human Capacity Building in Integrated Water Resources Management. One of our uh, programs is Waternet, are short professional courses like the one which we are having here in Eswatini. This course is basically on financing of water infrastructure projects. What we hope to achieve uh, with this course is to have water sector professionals able to develop bankable pro proposals which can be funded to develop water infrastructure in countries like Eswatini and in all the other uh, SADC countries. Manager at Waternet, Prof. Omena, delegates from the 16 member states of SADAC, uh, the representative of the SADAC Water Fund, uh, the different facilitators of this workshop, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and all protocol that is observed in this room. As the Kingdom of Eswatini, it gives me great honor to be officiating in this workshop which is talking to financing water infrastructure, which is held in the Kingdom of Eswatini. We feel greatly honored to have been chosen as your host, and uh, we hope that you have enjoyed our hospitality this far, and we believe that your stay in the Kingdom will actually result in good memories, so that you actually get time to come back uh, during your spare time. We also greatly appreciate the contribution, as indicated by the prof here, of our WaterNet uh, Regional Water Training Facility, which is actually guided through the SADAC uh, Water Resources Technical Committee, whereby the member states of SADAC endorsed that uh, WaterNet becomes one of our subsidiary training institutions, basically to build capacity in the different member states on areas of water resources management and development. As indicated sitting here, I'm one of the products of the water and training courses. And uh, one notes that currently in the water sector, most of the directors sitting there are products of WaterNet. And indeed, it is good to go for training because you actually talk to issues with the right skills. We are greatly honored for having gone through this training program. And I believe your training here as well is going to add value to the way we package our projects, as indicated by the prof here. Uh, we are saying that the training on financing of, op of water project is coming at a, an opportune time where the region as a whole is looking at uh, regional integration with emphasis on industrialization, which has been chosen as the focus area. And this cannot actually happen without water because we know that water is an engine for development and without water, this industrialization which the region is talking to can never actually happen. And uh, when we look forward, we note that our water sector is actually the least funded, if you look at the capital investment in the water sector, simply for the reason that water is still considered as a social good. But we know that uh, water is more than a social good. If you look at your, is it the Dublin uh, principles, where water is also an economic value. So we need to actually push water to that level where investors and funders are going to develop keen interest to fund our water resources because the only time they come to fund us is when our projects are coupled with big infrastructure interventions like hydropower generation. That is when you then come to see people coming in willing to come and partner with us under the PPP arrangements. But as you talk to water for just basic water supply, they always tend to shy away. And it is also critical that uh, this uh, project or this training be undertaken because it is noted that we're lacking the skills to prepare bankable projects as the prof has indicated. Many are times where we've tried to package projects starting from concept notes, but this could not actually adequately address or capture the attention of our different funders. 
because there is uh, something that they're looking for in our project proposals, which they are still failing to get. One believes that this training is going to adequately skill us on those kind of areas so that when we present our programs or our project proposals, they actually get the attention of our funders. The region is also aware of the existing funding opportunities from which water resources financing can be sourced. And we know that they range from regional initiatives. Currently, we have the Sadak Water Fund, which is actually coming through the Sadak region. And currently, the Water Fund is funded in the Development Bank of Southern Africa, where some member states have actually benefited where projects actually are being implemented on the ground. And there is a talk of a lot of funding existing within global platforms, like the Global Environmental Facilities uh, and the Global Climate Change Fund. There as well, they are looking for proper package projects so that we can actually tap into these resources. It's a lot of money, but they are very strict on how you package your project. So this training is also going to add value so that as a, a sector, we can then tap into these resources. Welcome to the kingdom, and may we declare this workshop officially opened. Thank you. This training is in par part of uh, a set of trainings that Waternet has been implementing as part of the SADEC Strategic Human Capacity Plan. Mm. At SADEC level, a capacity need assessment for the water sector was established. And 15 areas were identified where capacity for water professional was supposed to be enhanced. Mm. With the support from our donors, and in this case, I'm talking about the GIZ, with funding from the British government and the German government, they picked six out of the 15 areas they were identified in order to support the training. Those areas were gender, financing of water infrastructure that you are doing currently, it was water demand management, it was monitoring eco-health status, it was international water law, and negotiation. Those six areas targeted all SADC member states, but also river basin organization. We have a lot of river basin organization within the SADC region, so they couldn't support all of them, but they singled out some that they supported. It was the Okakom on the Okavango, the Zamkom, on the Zambezi, and the Oracecom on the Orion Senku. So this training falls under that agreement where we have tried this time not only to have courses in English, but in all the three SADC national languages. So as part of the grant agreement, we have had uh, courses in French, in Portuguese and in English. And financing of water infrastructure being an important one is one of the course where the three languages were actually implemented. As a result, that's why you see in this group, which is the follow-up training, some that attended the course in French and some that attended the course in English and Portuguese. That we have uh, Ms. Farai Tumuna from the Development Bank of Southern Africa, who would really give that practical dimension to the training. Of course, I cannot also overlook the presence of the lead facilitators. You have Dr. Yap Hudson and Professor Luesi. I'm really hoping that uh, we we'll have more projects coming to the funders, mm. whether it's DBSA, whether it's uh, AFDB, even the Africa Water Facility. Mm. You see, at African level, year after year, they are saying that they are not receiving 
bankable proposal. Mm. So year after year, they are underspending. So it's really my hope uh, that uh, this training would contribute toward uh, solving that underspending that is being uh, experienced uh, from the financing institution. So with uh, those words, uh, I would like to thank you once again uh, for making some time to attend this training. First of all, remember that this workshop is a continuation of what we did in Johannesburg or in Antananarivo. The first thing we'll do is to refresh uh, the memory of participants on key issues and points that were addressed in the April and July workshops on financing of water infrastructure. Remember that we have a funder here. She's there, and if money were to be colored in the face of somebody, She'll be full of money here. And she's just telling you, give me a paper for you to get this. So we are going to refresh your mind on that. And we'd like you now, in this workshop, to be uh, the one baking the, the cake in the oven. So you'll be the one waking, because we will, this time, show you how to develop a funding proposal. And you'll be doing it in group work. We are now going to run through quickly some of the main points from the earlier workshop. They are based on presentations and I realize that there are some new people here. So I think what Waternet will do is make sure that uh, those who haven't attended the earlier workshops can have access to the presentations there. So we build up a similar amount of information, presentations, background documents for all of us. That's the way that we, f we really form a team that can work on developing the proposal. And we have to go back to the basics. What is IWN? I, I'm sure you're all familiar with it. Yeah, it's not just an environmental good, it's an economic good with a price, with a value. It's a social good. Think about the Sustainable Development Goal. Number, what is it? Nine, I think. Yeah. It also talks about decentralized participatory water resource management with active involvement, especially from women as well. And, and as you will all be aware, quite a few of you work for a combination of wa water and sanitation, where you try to balance the supply and the, uh, of fresh water with the reuse of uh, treated wastewater. Water efficiency, you're all aware of that, is also a critical issue. So it's not just demand-driven or supply-driven. We try to balance it. And as you will see later, a lot of funding agencies will require you to have identified possible alternatives for the project you come up with. If you haven't done that, it's not a bankable project. Yeah. So you have to develop your project within that broader framework, justifying why you come up with this particular intervention. Uh, Waternet, uh, as a SADC uh, subsidiary institution, has in fact been given the mandate uh, of uh, unlocking the potential for water resources management and development through capacity building. What has been established is in fact that there's really a need to enhance and build the capacity of water professional if we want to advance the agenda for the SADC region. And a need assessment of uh, capacity need has been established and a strategic human capacity plan was developed where 15 areas were identified in terms of uh, capacity building needs. And uh, financing water infrastructure is one of the 15 uh, areas that was identified. In fact, that area is so important that uh, 
we conducted trainings not only in English, but we made sure that all the three SADC languages had trainings on the same issue of financing. So we had training for Francophone and also training for Russophone. Because it's clear that without uh, adequate training on how to put bankable proposal, we cannot talk about water resources development because we cannot manage water resources unless we start by somehow developing some of the infrastructure that will allow us to actually effectively manage the water resources management. So in fulfilling our mandate as a SADEC subsidiary institution, we need also to recognize the support that we are receiving from our international cooperating partners. And in this case, it's delegated responsibility from GIZ that receive funds from the British and the German government. And I think uh, we need uh, to appreciate their support without which uh, such training wouldn't have been able to, to take place. And this course is in fact one of a set of several trainings. WaterNet is going to implement for the period running from June 2017 to April 2019 about 21 short professional training courses for SADC member state mainly, but also for river basin organization. And here, I'm talking about uh, the Okavango Commission, the Zambezi Water Coast Commission, but also the Oren Senku Water Commission. And six areas have been identified. The one that we have currently, which is on water financing, but we have also five other areas, which are gender in water resources, which is important. You have your water demand management, you have the international water law, you have water management, you have negotiations, and of course, water quality aspect, which we package it in terms of monitoring uh, ecosystem uh, status of uh, our rivers. So those are the other six areas for which WaterNet will implement courses for SADC member states, but also for river basin uh, organization. This training course, which is conducted by WaterNet, WaterNet being a training institution approved by SADAC, it is actually very important for us as the Kingdom of Eswatini. This course is on financing of infrastructure, and as a ministry and as a country, we still are looking up to putting up infrastructure projects, especially water harvesting infrastructure. And this is developing the required skills to make sure that as we develop and as we package our projects, we do it the right way. Bankers up there or people who are financing projects, they would need financing or projects to be packaged in a particular manner. And as a country, we really need support in actually building the required skills to make sure that as we put up these proposals, they're actually done the right way so that they can easily attract funding uh, from the funding institutions. The benefits of this course is that we actually are going to be pushing people, or we've pushed people, uh, our specialist, which uh, is going to actually build the capacity in them so that as we go back into our offices, we then start to put up project proposals to actually benefit from the number of funding structures that do exist up there. We've been trying to do this, but you'd find that at times the skills would not be adequate so that we push up a project that could easily attract funding from the funding sources. The long-term benefits which we see coming from this is that we'll have a pool of expertise from which we can tap into when it comes to looking for project financing. Currently, you'd find that uh, we don't have enough personnel looking at project proposal, formulating projects, yet we still need to gear up our sort of resource mobilization 
noting that not much investment has gone into infrastructure development. The liquid that we have is not sufficient to benefit the country. We're still very low on infrastructure development as a country, and we believe that the people that we have actually trained under this project are going to give us the, the benefit of having our projects uh, positively reviewed and getting the attention of the funders out there. So the skills that we are going to develop from here are going to take us to another level when it comes to project uh, compilation and project actually uh, appraisal and uh, sort of uh, concept note preparation. If you look at the capacity gaps that you currently have, one was indicating that uh, currently uh, within ourselves, we don't have that much of skilled capacity or skilled human resource to properly package projects so that if you can just push in one proposal, it doesn't come back for correction. It actually is uh, formulated along the lines of the funders up there because there's critical areas which they're looking for when you're pushing up a proposal. So currently we didn't have that kind of expertise and we believe that this kind of training is going to help us to close that gap, that human capacity gap, so that we have confidence on the people that have been trained through this one, so that we know that we expose them to that kind of platform where they're going to assist us as a department to make sure that we get funding uh, for our projects which we want to take up. <laughs> And uh, as a country, we believe that <clears throat> this training that we are going to get is going to enable us to have consideration of our projects in the regional platforms, also in the international platforms, where there's funding that we need to apply for. Because in the past, we've been going up and down, going up and down, trying to push up proposals. And we find that sometimes they're found wanting, and we spend a lot of time trying to correct the mistakes. But this one is going to say, now we have a pool from which we are going to rely, and these people are also going to train more people so that going forward we would have a bigger pool of people with the right expertise to make sure that our projects are crafted the right way and they get uh, easy attention when they are being put into the evaluation panels for project financing going forward. And this is going to be a serious benefit to the country because we are going to attract a lot of attention for our infrastructure project. I believe this one is going to have great benefits to the country. And we're very grateful to be given this opportunity as well to host the member states of SADAC so that we also get to know what each and every member state is going to be doing going from here. And it's a big benefit that we see even for the region as a whole because it's not only us coming and sitting here, but it's the region as a whole. So we're really greatly honored from this workshop. We are believing that a lot of benefit is going to be filtering into the region as a whole. The first course, we just got general um, ideas on how to use financial mechanisms in order to source funds from other sources. Because we know that traditionally, water sources for funding were the three T's. Three T, T means, first of all, tariffs. The other T means tariffs, uh, sorry, taxes. And the other one is transfer, transfer from donors. But we showed to the student that there were other means of sourcing funds. For instance, the three Ps, PPPs, private, public partnerships. And we talked also about the blending different type of uh, sources and make to have bl uh, blended finance. And uh, we said that it was very important for, for, for students to combine, uh, to do a kind of combination of all these sources. Then we show them other things, like they have to know how to manage data, because it is very important for them to focus and then come up with uh, a clear idea of what they, want, they expect, as probably income or cost of the project. And then they can come up with uh, analysis, take, uh, uh, such as uh, cost benefit analysis, or any other appraisal that will help them uh, uh, I, mean, I mean, submit a project, a proposal that would be bankable. So we just gave them basic ideas. Also on institutions, for example. How you audit an institution 
what are involved in auditing and control and so forth. And then general inter integrated water resource management, RWRM principles. How do you apply them in water projects? So these are some of the few things we told them. The first course exposed uh, participants to the basics of what's happening in terms of uh, financing of water infrastructure, what are opportunities, why don't uh, good proposals are forthcoming, and what factors do people have to take into account to try to submit, uh, to try to get off the ground more proposals that can finance water infrastructure in uh, Southern Africa. The second course is, is a follow-up, so the assumption is that uh, all the participants have been exposed to the first phase. That was an introduction, if you like. Now we hope to get close to project proposals by the end of this workshop. So now the emphasis is very much less on presentations. In the first workshop we did a lot of presentations. Now it's more participants putting together information that they need to develop proposals. So we're going to organize them in six work groups, always a specific project, and then they have to develop a skeleton proposal. There are six work groups, they all focus on different topics, which were suggested during the first phase. So one group deals with uh, ocean and pollution, that's the island groups, of course, and the coastal areas. One group deals with irrigation, that needs a lot of water. One group we deals with inter-basin uh, transfers. That is four. Then the fifth group deals with, what was it again? Oh, uh, dams. And then the sixth group deals with uh, monitoring and evaluation. How can you set up systems to monitor hydrological data you need for projects? Well, very practically, we hope one is that they learn from each other's experiences. So what is relevant in one country, how can you learn from that in another country or in the basin that you share with other countries? And secondly, to help them to get an understanding of how they can, after the workshop, come up with a fully-fledged proposal that can be submitted to uh, funding agencies. They cannot do it here because they need cooperation from other people in their countries and they need approval from the relevant authorities. But hopefully they know exactly what next steps to follow after this workshop to get it to that stage. So there need to be follow-ups of this workshop by all the participants. Well, basically what we want to achieve from this was we want to get uh, to know how we can develop our good proposals, which we can use to finance our water infrastructure projects. As we know that as a member states within the South Dakota division, we have an obligation to develop more water infrastructure projects. At this course, we have learned about uh, um, water projects, uh, financing water, water projects. So we have made uh, the process for uh, infrastructure and uh, adding uh, finance and uh, analysis for project and um, also to choose which is the most affor affor affordable for the uh, society. Uh, the knowledge that I got from South Africa are the cost benefit analysis from projects and also the mod criteria and also the SWOT analysis, whereby you're looking at external and internal strength, weaknesses. The, the first part of the training was mostly focused on uh, getting the knowledge skills that are required in developing project proposals. And we learn about project appraisals, multi-criteria analysis, and cost-benefit analysis. And how to frame projects for getting funds from funding agencies. Yeah. Uh, in Zimbabwe, we have got uh, so many projects that, we are, that are on the cards. 
where we want to to, to, to like to lure investors to come and help us in implementing those projects. So by the use of this, uh, the the knowledge that we got from, especially from the SADC or from the DBSA, how we are going to to like to to sell or to market our projects. Uh, so that's how we are going to we are going to I'm going to take that knowledge and also to to tell my colleagues and also to use that skill in implementation of projects. Uh, in this course, I accept that uh, as issue at this course, we can um, submit projects to the bank or to a financial uh, buyer we can fund an infrastructure um, for any uh, project of water supply and uh, also I have uh, more uh, experience and training with the other country. And uh, in this course, I, uh, I hope to learn project proposal, the nitty gritties of project proposal from the concept note to the proposal Through our different organizations, since we have an obligation to develop, uh, to come up with different um, infrastructure projects that can help us alle alleviate pro uh, poverty through, through the development of water infrastructure, we are going to do this during the development of our different uh, proposals. We are going to de develop different proposals. We are also going to align the skills that we have through our social responsibility. That combined is going to help us manage better our water infrastructure. So uh, after these courses, I think that um, not only I can uh, present a project, but I can also help all who need uh, to present a project to SADEC or for African Bank or for another, uh, uh, another entities who need a new infrastructure project to inform their uh, country or their uh, locality. Uh, as a planning engineer, I'm going to use this, this uh, skill and knowledge in the implementation of projects in, um, in my country. Uh, as you know, we are, the, we are a member of the SADAC, and SADAC has got some has got funds with DBSA, uh, it's good for us as, as a country to benefit from the funds. As a fact that I'm working at the ministry and under my ministry we have three sectors, the water, the wastewater and the energy sector. For all these sectors we need to uh, mobilize funds and government usually do. Uh, we have gaps in funding projects so for these gaps we need to seek the assistance of funding agencies. And funding agencies themselves, they have their own criteria for uh, giving funds, be it on grant or loans. So we have to meet those criteria. So this uh, course will, are very helpful and will help me in developing those skills to make uh, good project proposals towards the funding agencies to be able to secure the funding. Okay, uh, as an individual, first uh, it will improve my knowledge gain as I will have improved through my project uh, developing skills, uh, project proposal formulating, and also to getting to know how other countries uh, have other projects based on the water infrastructure. So that we integrated together, we come up with something that is tangible, beneficial to us as Siswati. Uh, this course is uh, very important because um, it uh, enhances my capacity. It uh, is very uh, powerful of um, information and uh, training. So I have work in the water sector and this formation is very, very interesting uh, how I make, uh, how I work after uh, after I turn back in Madagascar. 
yeah this training course is very important to me because it's enhancing my my skills and my capacity as an engineer because most of my work i do i do with projects uh, as a civil engineer we have learned the trade about we have the technical knowledge we also in this we have been trained to some part on the financial aspect but this training is very important because it it encompasses the whole uh, give us a whole knowledge that are required for these project proposals from the financial the cost benefit analysis how to develop the project itself what are the different uh, factors that we need to take into consideration and uh, for me also as a deputy director it gives me the opportunity to share it with my subordinates i think it's very important because i have my staff who are working with me for me it will give me an opportunity to train them also in developing those skills this is very important because here the country are facing major uh, water related uh, challenges which need us to develop more infrastructure to try and have more area under irrigation we have more areas to develop for providing uh, water infrastructure that can supply water for domestic use and other uses so in a way it is, it is very beneficial to our country for my country it is uh, important because uh, the first one my country belongs to a SADC state and um, as I seen uh, in this uh, training Madagascar is one of the prior um, uh, country will be fond of a SADC so after this course I think that um, it uh, I have to present to my uh, chief that we need to present our presentation to present our to present and project to SADEC because we are in that priority. To my country, like I said, we'll be benefiting. With this knowledge, we can source funding from other institutions, the EU, FDB, the SADAC, from the DBSA. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, project proposals are meant to seek funding. So if we can submit good proposals, of course, that means the country will benefit. It can be in terms of grant or soft loan to be able to develop projects and for the uh, economic prosperity of the country. Thank you.